Good day everyone, Dave here. Now I know it's been a while since I last posted a video in my channel. I had several videos planned out but unfortunately all of those had to take a back seat when I started accepting mining rig build jobs for various clients. I source out the parts, build the rigs, and then teach my clients how to operate, maintain, as well as troubleshoot the mining rigs. So for several weekends already, I've built quite a number of mining rigs and I finally got permission to post one of those. Actually, it's a small mining farm consisting of four rigs which I built on two different Saturdays. A total of 48 GTX 1060s, unfortunately all Hynix memories, but still managing 14,000 solutions per second mining on Equihash. So like what I mentioned, there are a total of four mining rigs here. One consisting of 12 Inno 3D mining cards. The second is a mix of MSI Gaming X, Palette Super Jet Stream, and Palette Jet Stream video cards. Both of these rigs are running on the Biostar TB250 BTC Pro motherboard, Intel Celeron G4400 CPU, 8GB RAM, 120GB SSD, and two 1200W ATX power supplies. The third and fourth rigs are basically twins, each with 12 ASUS Dual 1060s running on the ASUS B250 Mining Expert motherboard. The other peripherals are basically the same as the other two rigs, but one ATX 1200W power supply and then one 1200W server power supplies each, due to budget constraints. I thought initially of setting these up in the usual mining racks I use, but in my experience, managing the rigs in those racks are somewhat a little more difficult since it's harder to replace the riser cards if they went bad, harder to take out the video cards individually if I want to put them on the test bench, harder to reach or replace certain cables and so on and so forth. Basically a little more tedious to do maintenance on. What I saw when I was making a run in the hardware store was this adjustable industrial rack. I immediately imagined how to do a twin setup using the racks and grab one of those for my own two new rigs. Here's a photo to show you. Now I haven't shared a video yet on how I set these up, hopefully next time when I'm not that busy anymore. I really like this particular setup since it was way more easier to install the parts. I hung all the graphic cards on the racks using zip ties and then placed the motherboards a few inches below the GPUs. Managing the cables and risers were pretty easy since there's enough room for my hand to go in between the spaces and no need for me to pull out the GPUs if I need to reinstall risers or cables. I simply reach in and pull them out. The monitors and other peripherals are then placed below the rigs, saving up space where they are placed. It's pretty convenient if you ask me. So back to my client's small mining farm. For the first two rigs I built for him, I used the same rack and same specs as my previous 12 GPU builds. I started working on this around 3 p.m and ended at around 2 a.m. The reason was that one of the Biostar motherboards I bought was faulty, it wasn't booting up at all, and after determining the problem, I had to go back to my house, pick up my spare motherboard, and drive all the way back to my client's house. That taught me to always bring spare parts when working on mining rigs. The next two mining rigs, the client bought the rack this time. Pretty similar to the first rack, the twins are running on the ASUS V250 Mining Expert motherboard. 19 GPUs, but I'm not yet that crazy and try to pull off a 19 GPU build. I think I'll stick with the 12 GPU mining rigs. When I was building these particular rigs, it was pretty smooth. Everything worked great and the only problem I encountered was that at first, the motherboard was sounding an error. I thought it was another faulty motherboard but apparently it wasn't reading a source on the monitor. I had to first turn on the TV, switch it to HDMI source before powering up the system. After that, booting up was pretty smooth. On the BIOS settings, I just had to make a few setting changes. Here are some screenshots for your reference. The client requested for the rigs to run on Windows using NiceHash. He said he felt more comfortable learning how to mine using this one. When he gets accustomed to it, 
you can then switch to pool mining or maybe even simple mining OS. So after installing Windows 10, I downloaded the latest GeForce driver, MSI Afterburner, Tech GPU Z, and Nice Hash Legacy. I turned off the system and installed the GPUs. Now, very important, you won't be able to install the graphic drivers if GPUs aren't connected to the motherboard yet. After installing, check first if all the GPUs do not have error on the post. If there are, check if the PCIe 1X risers are clean or doesn't have scratches on them. Check if they are installed properly. And check if the GPUs or risers are connected to the PSU. Once logged in on Windows, just see if all the GPUs are detected by the system. Something like this. There are some instances wherein the GPUs aren't detected at all, but after installing the graphic drivers and restarting the system, all will then appear on the device's manager. After the install and restart, install now the MSI Afterburner, Tech GPU C, and Nice Hash Legacy. Take a quick look at the memory chips of your video cards using Tech GPU Z. Samsung Memories does very well mining Ethereum and other Dagger Hashimoto algorithms and are at par with Micron and Hynix chips when mining Equihash and other algorithms. Micron can do average on Ethereum while Hynix cards are pretty bad. I can do at most 19 mega hashes per second on Hynix chips but I think it's already pushing the card at its limit. Not very good if you want the cards to have a longer lifespan. He also said he wanted me to add two more rigs on the same rack for a total of six mining rigs in his house. Just to give you an idea, the client had to increase power outlets in the particular area where the mining rigs are. This is because his previous circuit breaker won't be able to power up all of the planned six mining rigs. So the new power outlets have an additional 30 amps from the circuit breaker. Now since all the cards have Hynix memory chips, there's no other choice but to run them on Equihash. I didn't even bother benchmarking Dagger Hashimoto on these cards on NiceHash since I know it's just going to be a waste of precious mining time. I immediately went on benchmarking the rigs on Equihash DSTM Miner. Here are the OC settings for the rigs and the performance. Now before I conclude this video, I'd like to say a few thoughts with regards to mining and profitability. Many people are probably thinking that mining is not worth it anymore and that the difficulty levels will blow up as soon as the GTX 20 series come out. Now in all honesty, that may be true. Profitability has significantly declined compared to 2017 levels. I think that's due to a number of factors such as crypto mining prices went down, GPU miners have increased exponentially thus increasing the mining difficulty levels, prices of hardware have shot up through the roof, and electricity rates, especially here in the Philippines, have increased as well. But for employed folks such as myself who are looking at making money on the side, it's still an opportunity for me to make additional income without requiring me to quit my day job. Now sure, if I make a new mining rig right now, it would probably take me a little over a year to make my money back or reach ROI, but there's still that chance for me to make my money back and then make a little more. Now the goal now is to make my mining rigs last a little longer than I'm expecting. I guess a little over 2 or 3 years if possible. Now as long as electricity consumption does not exceed my mining income, I think I'm gonna continue running my mining rigs. Now there are also several coins which seem promising which if I mine some today, in a couple of months, I may make decent profit after I sell them at a higher rate. It's all about taking risk and when I say that, it should be calculated risk. You should do diligent research by reading blogs, watching videos such as this one. Make sure to invest money which won't leave you broke or deep in debt if ever things don't go as well as planned out. Try to learn also how to do cryptocurrency market trading in order to maximize your profits. And if possible, try to plan a good exit strategy. If you feel that it's not something meant for you or if you can't keep up with it anymore, there's no shame in calling it quits. I'm sure there are a couple of miners out there who would be willing to purchase your mining equipment at a reasonable rate. Now these are some of the reasons why I decided to pursue mining as well as why I'm not stressing out at least not that much whenever markets decline. I hope this video helped you out in some way. I'd like to thank all of those who have subscribed to my channel. If you haven't yet and would like to continue watching videos of my mining journey, please feel free to click on the subscribe button.
share and give this video a thumbs up while you're at it. If you have questions, please feel free to throw them in at the comment section below. Whenever I have the free time, I enjoy replying to all of your comments, technical or non-technical. So that's about it for the video. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and happy mining.